Alright guys, what is up? Your friendly programmer here back with another video. Today we're going to be creating the player class. And we're going to be connecting the player class to our handler class that we made last time. Um, and so the player class is exactly what you think it is. It's going to be the player, which is going to be you. And it's going to represent um, our Mario character in this game. So with that, let's get right into um, building this player class. So let's start by opening up our source file and going to com.game.object. And let's go ahead and right click this and do new class. And let's go ahead and type in player.java. So this is going to be our player.java class. And let's go ahead and create that. And now we have our player.java class. So <clears throat> in here, let's start by creating a couple um, constants. So let's do private, static, final, float, width. And set that to 16. And private, static, final, float, height. And set that to 32. So this is going to represent the width and the height of our character or our player object. And let's go ahead and do private handler handler. And so this is just that we can access the game objects um, through our handler. And we're going to need that eventually for collision detection, which I think we'll get into next episode. So let's go ahead and do public player float x float y <clears throat> in scale handler handler. And so this is going to be our constructor for our player class, where we pass in the position of where we want our player to start, um, the scale for our player, and the handler that's being used in the game. And we'll go ahead and call super. And we want we want this player class to extend the game object that we created. So the, the game object class that we created earlier. So extend game object. And so now we want to call the constructor from the game object. And so that's what the super does. And go ahead and do super and pass in x, y, object id. Oh, let's not forget a comma here. Object id, um, player. And we can go ahead and import the object ID up here and do width, height, and scale. Okay, so we pass in everything into our super or our game object constructor. And down here, let's just do this dot handler is equal to a handler. Okay, great, and let's save that. We're getting an error up here because we haven't implemented the methods from game object yet. And so let's go ahead and do that. So now we <clears throat> have these methods so we can delete this auto-generated method stub. And I'm gonna make some spaces down here so we can see what's going on down here. So in our tick method, we're going to do set x is equal to get the velocity of x plus get x. And so you can think of this as, um, so the set x is coming from our game object class. So we can just go to that real quick. 
So set x, remember it's just a setter. So whatever x value we pass into here, it's just going to set the x for this um, game object. So we, we're going to set the x to, and what do we set it to? We set it to whatever the velocity of our, um, our velocity x is plus our x position. And these are just getters from our game object that we created earlier. So remember down here we have a get x which just returns x and get velocity x which just returns velocity x. And so remember this is the tick method. Um, and so the tick method is basically the update function. So every tick or every update, what do we want to do? We want to update the x position or set the x position to our current x position plus whatever velocity we're at. And so if our velocity is at a value of one, then we're just gonna, every, every time we tick, we're going to be updating the position of x by one. So if our, if our current x is zero, our velocity x is one, we're going to do zero plus one, which is one, and then set that one to our x position. So now we're at 1. So now we get x, x will be 1, velocity x will still be 1, and so we do 2, and then we set x to 2. And then it'll go 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and our x position keeps updating uh, one by one. And so that's sort of what's going on here. And we'll do the same for the y position. So set y equal to get velocity y plus get y. And you can think of this as the same thing. So we're just setting the y to our current y position plus whatever the velocity in the y direction is. And after that, we want to call apply gravity. And remember where this is coming from. This is from our game object class again. So if we go back here, let me go to uh, apply gravity. All we're doing here is we're updating the y, the velocity y. So it just increments the velocity y by whatever it is, plus 0 0.5. And so we just call that method here in our tick. So now we're applying gravity. And let's not do anything in the render method yet. We'll save that for um, when we start generating textures, animations, and all of that. So we'll get to this eventually. And we'll also get to this get bounds um, when we start doing collision detection, which will be very soon. So we'll save this method as well. So let's go ahead and save that. And now we want to go back to our handler class and add a couple more methods here so that we can uh, access our player object from this handler class. And so what we want to do is we want to put some spaces down here and we want to do um, we want to be able to set the player and remove the player and get the player. So let's go ahead and create those methods. So public int set the player and we'll do player player and let's go ahead and do if this dot player does not equal oh, this dot player does not equal null then we want to do return negative one Okay, so I kind of got ahead of myself here, so let's go ahead and import this, and let's go ahead and create a player um, instance variable in this class. So let's go ahead and do that. So private player player. And so now this refers to the player up here. So we have this and let's go down here and do add object player and let's do this dot player equals player and 
return zero. Okay, so to explain what this does, um, so if you call this set player method, then it's going to first check if our player has been set yet. So if it's null, um, and if this player is Um, yeah, so if this player is not null, then then it's already been set to something. And so we're going to return negative 1. However, if it is null, so if it hasn't been set yet, then we're going to go through, or we're going to go past this if, if statement, and we're going to go ahead and add object um, player. So that's calling this method up here, which just adds whatever game object to our game objects list. And because player is a game object, remember we extended game object, we can um, call this call this add object on the player. So we add the object to our game or our handler, and then now we just update our this dot player to whatever player we passed in, and we go ahead and return zero. And so this return negative one and this return zero is just so that you can see the status of this set player. Um, from the from the caller side. So if you call this function and you get a negative one, then you know that the player has not been set successfully. And if it's been if you get zero return, then you know that it has been successfully set. And so we're gonna go ahead and now do um, create our remove player function. So let's go ahead and do public int remove player. And in here we want to do if player is equal to null, then return negative one. And let's go ahead and scroll down a little bit. Oops. So let's do so now down here we want to do remove object player. And we want to do this dot player is equal to null. And we want to return zero. <clears throat> so this is very similar to what we had above. Um, so in this case, we're checking if the player is null. So if it hasn't been set, or if there is no player right now, then we want to return negative one. Because we can't remove a player if it if it's, uh, hasn't been set yet. So that's what this does, and if it has been set, so if player does refer to something, if player is not null, then it goes down here and it removes object player, and that's just a method that we have up here, which is uh, remove object, and all it does is it takes in the object that we pass in and it removes it from our list. And so we remove the player object from the list, and this is the same as this add object in that the player extends game object. And so it's valid to pass in our player into this method. And now we do this dot player is equal to null. So we, we uh, remove the reference to the player and we return zero. So zero indicates that it's been successfully removed and negative one indicates that it hasn't been successfully removed. Okay, and the last thing we want to do is public player get player. And this is just a getter for our player object. And so we want to do return player right here. And so all this does is it returns the player when we call this method. All right, and now let's go ahead and run our code just to make sure it still compiles properly. So let's go ahead and click that green button and yeah, everything still loads properly. And so that's going to be the end for this episode. I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, starting in the next few episodes, we're going to be adding on to our player object. We're going to implement key input so that we can move our object and we're going to be building a collision system so that we have 
um, where we're able to detect collisions and uh, create walls and a floor and we're going to also start implementing our render function so that we can see some stuff appear on our screen. So with that, um, thanks for tuning in. I hope you all enjoyed it and learned a lot. Please remember to like and subscribe. Let's try to get 150 likes this video. Um, it really means a lot to me if you guys, or when you guys like this video. And also if you have any questions or any tips or anything you want me to know about, please, um, please add your comments to the comment section of this video and I will as always get to them as soon as I can. And with that, um, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.